I just under the direction of the Lord, I have some things I have to share with you. And I want to put this in context because I don't, want, I don't want this to be what it could be. It's part of why I wanted to take the offering up first. I've, I've prayed and I really feel the Lord told me to share this in this way. And I'm just trust. Let's, let's just pray because I want you to receive this the way that I intended and the way that the Lord intends it. God, be with me this morning as I share this statement with your people. Lord, I pray that it will be received. I pray that your spirit will be present. I pray that I will use your words and not mine. I pray that your people will hear what you would have them hear and not what they could hear, that you would remove any filter the enemy might put between us and them, whether it's in this room or whether it's online. I pray, Lord, that your work and your will would be done, and I pray that you would honor my obedience this morning in doing something very difficult, but for the sake of your kingdom and for the sake of your glory. I thank you. And I praise you this morning in your name. Amen. So here's, here's what's up. Number one, I need to share some facts with you. The truth of the matter is our finances at the church are not good. They have not been good for quite some time. Uh, we have been operating in a deficit for many, many months. The savings that we have had because God was very faithful and very good to us during COVID are no longer in the bank. We have spent those. Um, trying to keep the, the church maintained in the same way that we have done for the previous four and a half years. And um, there simply has not been an influx of finances. The, the honest truth of the situation is there's only a very small group of people that are giving regularly. And one of our largest givers has re recently had something happen. Well, I say recently, over the course of the last year, has had some things happen that have decreased what they're able to give. And I'm sharing that not with you as a plea for money. I'm sharing it with you just to be honest because you're part of this church and you need to understand why I'm going to say some of the next things I'm going to share with you this morning. Something else I want to do. Venus, will you stand up? Just come up here. All the way up here. This is your church clerk. This lady is my friend, even when we, she is not our church clerk. She's been my friend for a very long time. And there are church clerks and pastors and ministers all over the United States that have robbed their churches blind. This lady has worked extra jobs and extra hours, and she has even... Many, on many occasions, not even told me she was doing it and earned extra money and simply put it in the church to keep it going. There are people everywhere who are stealing from the church because they see it as a place where there's tons of finances. And you've got a church clerk that has quietly behind the scenes sacrificed in ways you will never understand and that I didn't even fully myself understand until the last 30 days because she believes in what God is doing here and she believes in the church. And she has floated the difference many, many times times and I want to praise her and thank her and celebrate her in front of all of you because while other men are struggling with the church being stolen from you have a church where the clerk cares so much she can't give enough will you celebrate her with this morning I celebrate you and I appreciate you and I love you So it's not anything, you can go sit down now. I know that was very awkward and you didn't like it. <laughs> so there are, there are good things happening in our church. We have still, up until very recently, been able to invest a lot of money into the church building, into helping people. God has supplied for my family for nearly five years without me having to do anything other than preach and teach. And that is tremendous. Also in the, I'm going to talk more about that in a minute, but in the, also in the interest of sharing with just facts with you. This is not discouragement. This is just the facts because we're going to face this as a body. Statistically, at the three-year mark when you're planting a church, you look at things and you say, if this is not growing and working, we need to reevaluate. Guess where our three-year mark fell? Right in the middle of COVID. Dead center of it. We lost people during COVID. We had people that didn't come back. We had people that left for various reasons. And when we have restarted, it has been slow. But we haven't really been rebuilding the church in earnest until around the fall of last year. So we're essentially starting something new. And the facts are when you start something new, you don't always have a lot of money. You don't always have a lot of staff. And you do what you have to do to get it up and running. 
So three years, you reevaluate it. Five years, if it's not growing, statistically, they say you abandon it. At the five-year mark, which we will hit in August, we've been officially a church for four years, but my family has been here building this for five. August is our five-year mark. Everyone on earth, our denomination, church planting statistics, friends, neighbors, folks looking from the outside in would look at what we're doing here and say, if by the end of summer this is not doing well, you should just call it a failed experiment. I have yelled, I have screamed, I have cried, I have thrown things. If people were outside, I'm surprised they did not call the police because I have played the part of David when he was having a bad day in this church off and on for days. God bless my family for putting up with it. God bless the neighbors for not calling and having me committed. I'm here to tell you this, we're not leaving. We're not quitting. We're not going anywhere. I'm doing that because I believe the Lord said so because I talked to several friends this week and I said, they're like, what do you need? Can we send you money? Do I need to come and visit? Do I need to send some people to help? What can we do? I said, I need you to pray that I know this is the will of God because if you gave me a million dollars, all you're buying me is time to fail over a longer period. If you filled my church up with people that are just going to be here three months, if it's not the will of God, those people eventually are going to have to go back home and the parking lot will be empty again and the seats will be empty again. I have had to, I have had to, I don't know that I even understood this word until this week, but I have had to travail to say, Lord, do we belong here? Do you want us here? Did we make a mistake? And the answer to that is no. We're not going to call it dead in five years, and we're going to stand here in the face of everything that everybody in the world is telling me we should do right now, except for the people that love the Lord and love me. So those are the facts. The finances are not good. We're in a deficit every month. Statistics say we should have reevaluated and we should shut it down. We're not doing those things. So what does that mean? I said, okay, Lord, if we're supposed to stay, what am I supposed to do? I need you, Lord, to show me where I have failed and what I need to do. Because as the pastor, I have to take responsibility for the congregation that God's gathered and what's happening You think you heard the hard part this morning. Let me share the hard part with you because second, I owe you all an apology. I owe you all an apology for this. My own pride. I've shared with you bits and pieces of my own history. And I've shared it in different sorts of ways, depending on the conversation. But I came out of a background where people did church a certain kind of way. And a lot of what I have done here has just been an arrogance and a refusal to do anything I've ever seen done before. Because I did not want to build the kind of church that I came out of that hurt me, that treated me poorly, and hurt so many other people. And there are times when I could have probably taken some of the things I learned in those other places and applied them here in a way that was productive. And I did not. Because I did something that I've even preached from this platform. As a matter of fact, if I remember, I preached it from the floor that Sunday. Where I said, you can't build something against something else because when the thing that you're opposing falls, there's nothing holding you up. And there are places where I have failed because I have built this church against things. I've built it against what I came out of. I've built it against what people told me. You can't do a church like that. Well, I'll prove you wrong. I'll do a church however I darn well want to. And there have been times when I have shown that to you in a prettier way, in a more godly way than I should have. I've had to listen to my own messages this week and say I have put a godly face on some things where they were my mistakes and I just didn't want anyone else to know. There are times when I should have asked for help from places and I haven't asked for help. And that monster of pride and arrogance that I have fought my entire life I have had to face again this week and realize that even in trying to do the work of the Lord, I have been an arrogant man. I also have to apologize for leading out of fear. If you know me, you know how I feel about money in church. I'm pretty honest about that. In fact, I I was... I was online last night, and this is the thing I get the most often. It's so funny when I hear people online attack me, and they say, how much money are they paying you to preach like that? 
How much money are you making declaring those things? I bet you wouldn't say those things if you were doing it for free. You preachers are just in it for the money. <laughs> and I know I'm standing here in a church where they don't see the other side of the camera, but there have been Sunday mornings when there were two or three people sitting in this room apart from me. And in coming up on five years, I have not taken a salaried paycheck from this church ever. <laughs> There's a piece of pride that I've had to let die where that is concerned because the Lord says that's part of this issue. But the other thing that drives me batty, the reason I'm so funny about money is because I have seen money done so poorly in so many churches, in other church plants, in other places. I told you we're celebrating our clerk because she's not stealing. She's going above and beyond to make it work. I've seen pastors rob their church blind. I've been in churches where I watched the pastors rob their church blind. I've been in churches where I have watched pastors who were sincere and loved the Lord and wanted nothing more than to build a great church that was a, a, a monument to the glory of the God that I serve. And I watched them grow and progress and be eaten up with the cancer of greed to the point that they felt entitled to everything the church gave them. And they were the richest person in the room and felt that they deserved it. I watched that firsthand happen in one church I was in over the course of eight years. And I swore when I left there I would never let that happen to me. But I have become afraid of being that. And I have left all of the finances on your clerk because I was scared of what people would say or what would happen or what might happen to me. And I can't lead you out of a place of fear. So this morning I apologize. And I'm asking you to forgive me for my pride and my arrogance and the places where I have led you out of fear rather than out of faith. This morning, I'm asking sincerely to those of you that are here and if you're online, whatever time you're watching this, I'm asking, will you forgive me as your pastor where I'm a man and have failed? Thank you. Because you have every right not to. I mean, the Lord says you're supposed to, but I'm not going to impose that on you right now. That's between you and the Lord. I'm not saying this just to get an emotional moment, but I want you to know I'm sincere. Forgive me. I've repented before the Lord, and I'm apologizing to you. So those are the facts. That's the apology that the Lord instructed me to make. The third thing, if you can forgive me and we are going to continue as a church, I need to share this with you. There are some changes that are going to have, have, to make, have to be made because we are going to have a future. I said we are going to have a future. And we're going to have it together and there are some things that have to happen in order for that to take place. I'm sharing these with you as a group so we'll all be on the same page and you'll understand. The first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to go to work. I don't say that as a complaint. It is going to take some adjustment on the part of my household and the part of you as my congregation because I have lived for five years with my door and my telephone wide open and no matter who walked on this property or who rang my phone or who came in the door or who knocked on the front door of the house at 1030 at night when I was already ready for bed and trying to settle my family, I have opened my doors, I have answered my phone, I have been there for you, I've returned phone calls when I can't, I'm not bragging, I'm simply saying I have lived open to the point that I have to be honest with you and say, if I'm going to work, my availability is going to become limited. My availability to you will not change. My commitment to you as your pastor does not change, but it may mean that it's two or three hours before I can call you back. It may mean that it's tomorrow before I can get to it if it's not an emergency. But I'm going to go work so that the Lord can provide for my family, for one. But for two, primarily I'm going to work so there's more money coming into this place because I believe in it. I'm not begging other people for more money. I'm telling you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to work. Going to work means my availability is going to change some. Still, please call me if you go in the hospital. Call me if there's an emergency. Talk to me if there's a funeral or a wedding or something important. I'm still your pastor. It just might mean I have to call you back in a minute. I'll, if we need to talk, I'll, let, me, let me finish if you don't mind. I'll, I'll be glad to talk after this. And I have a message this morning, believe it or not might be one of the hardest messages I've ever preached because I might just preach it to myself, but we'll get there. So the, I'm going to have to go to work. So that means my availability 
my, my acts or the access you have to me won't change, but when I'm available is going to become different. The other thing that's going to change is our schedule here. I'm praying about how we're going to modify our church schedule. I do not plan on that being long term, but it will likely be a short term situation, even if it's just through the summer. Um, I have not heard clearly from the Lord what that is. I have some ideas. I need to talk it over with our clerk. I'm going to talk it over with our folks that are here for uh, prayer on Tuesday night. You know who you are. <laughs> Miss Kathy is always here on Tuesday for prayer. I'm um, going to talk those things over, and we're going to pray about them, and over the course of the next month or so, we're going to figure out what does our schedule look like. Financially, something that's going to change is I'm going to become more directly involved in, in our money. I have been completely hands-off with it, and I'm going to get with our clerk, and I'm going to know what's happening, and I'm going to make some decisions, and some of them are going to be ugly and not fun because we just don't have the money, and some of them are going to be in faith, and they're going to scare her to death but it's what we're going to do because it's what the Lord's asked me to do. So knowing those three things, these are the facts. Here's my apology. Here's the plans for the future. I'm calling you this morning to pray with me before we go any further in this service. I'm calling you to prayer because first of all, I told you the first week in, in June, we're going to receive new members. I'm not doing that for the sake of money. I'm doing that right now because I need to know who's with us and who can we count on. Who's going to pray? Where is this your home? Who's going to show up? Who's going to help me gather people? Who's going to help me hear the vision of the Lord? I'm calling you to prayer this morning on three specific points. Number one, do you believe that this church belongs in Granite Falls? Thank you. I wasn't expecting an out loud answer, but it's great to have one. Do you believe this church belongs here? Number two, if this church belongs here, is it your church? And if it is your church, what about your involvement needs to change? The answer to that may be nothing. You may be doing exactly what God's asked you to do. I'm simply asking you to examine yourself in the way that I've examined myself already this week. If this is your church, what is God asking you to change? Even if it's nothing, be secure in what that is. The third thing I'm calling us to prayer on is vision. How and what do we do to build going forward? What does this look like and what is your place in it? I'm not running a one-man show anymore. Again, my pride, my fear, my desire to set a foundation and make sure everything was exactly what the Lord wanted, and my concern about how I've watched other people get involved in leadership is going to change because the Lord has changed and is changing me. Does this church belong here? Is this your church? What are we going to do to build it? This morning... We're going to pray together, and we're going to ask the Lord to answer us quickly and dramatically on those things, personally and as a congregation. What are we actually building here? I believe the Lord's going to tell us. I don't have anything else to make in this statement. I'm going to pray. We're going to sing another song this morning. I'm going to come back here, and we're going to preach like we preach every Sunday. And while the Lord is changing some things in me and is going to change some things in us, what we do here does not change. We glorify the Lord. We preach the word. We aren't afraid of it even when it's hard, like it's going to be on me in a minute. Trust me, I've already heard it. <laughs> we praise him, we worship him, and we do it as a congregation, not as a people that are following or coming to be fans of me. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you this morning for what you're doing in our church. I thank you that you've given us four and a half good years. I thank you, Lord, that you've been faithful even when it was difficult. I thank you, Father, that even in this hard time, you have spoken clearly and directly and that you have a plan and a purpose for this church and the people connected to it. You have a place that you want us to go. You have people that you want us to reach. There are ministries that you want us to launch, and there's a community that desperately needs you or you would not have sent us. Father, this morning I stand here not praying just for my family, not praying just for myself, and not praying just out of what's the right thing to say, but praying on behalf of your people who call this home. Lord, reveal to us what this church is in this community. Reveal to us individually where we belong in building that church. And reveal to us, Lord, what about us needs to change so that we can function in the way that you have called us to function.
This is a call not, not just to rally around the church, but a call to rally around our purpose as individuals and as people connected to a body. This morning, I pray for your spirit to convict where conviction needs to happen. I pray for your spirit to encourage where encouragement needs to happen. And I pray for clarity of vision and direction in our own lives and in our connection to this house so that we can connect it properly to the community that you intend it to be a vital part of. We love you, Lord, and we're grateful for you this morning. I'm looking forward to what you're going to do in this service. I thank you for this time. I thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness. I pray you'll be with us as we continue this morning. In your name we pray. Amen.